I am shocked by how many things are coming out of my mouth in places I didn't expect them to that are biblical references um, that I just read that week kind mm-hmm. of thing. How, and, and how that, that large contingent of input just becomes gradually the output. Like I don't have Absolutely. to try. I don't have to try. Right. Uh, I love that reliability of the word in me mm-hmm. so that when other messages come in, the framework they have to bounce off of is what the Bible says. And if it doesn't fit right away, I'm like, it doesn't fit. And if it fits, it fits right away. And it's in ways that aren't just sort of dogmatic, but are story driven and, and about uh, what the identity of the man, Jesus Christ himself, specifically about kingdom, right? right. About eschatology, the end of the world and, and all these things. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. That kind of leads into something else that I've been thinking about. Um, I, it's the, the concept that you've brought up a few times. And where is the place or what is the value of story in our life? That's and, a really good question. Um, I recently came across this, an article that was talking about that very question. Let's see, there's like this monomyth idea it's the the concept of There's the only monomyth one is that in order to create the classical hero he has to um have a divine birth huh. have an initiation have a um preparation for this grand feat and then a resurrection and an atonement And so if you look at classical literature, the heroes will be, um, will follow that. Uh Uh-huh, that pattern. Yes. Yeah, the hero, the hero quest. And. But it's divine. And divine hero quest. Adults and children desire to be heroes. And so leading, leading that desire to be a hero is that, um, we want to we want our life to be a story Mm -hmm. our life is a story and we are we are presciently aware of that fact yeah and so essentially what we're doing by going to stories is we're we're actually trying to find meaning in our life yeah so like you just said there are there are two ways that we as humans according to the article um uh experience the growth of our individual stories one is through the father's identity not to dismiss the mothers you matter too but golly can we move on now like get past that in history the father's identity is going all the way back to adam going all the way back to the father in heaven right well, exactly so the father's identity which is unavoidable and sometimes a curse usually in one way or another a curse in fact um and then the other way which again it, it limited it just to, to like fiction stories like the confessions of men so you have who your father is and you have what men say mm-hmm. and write. And those confessions of men, when they are valuable, St. Augustine, are about overcoming a trauma and a trial, right? It's, it's, the, it's the hero quest. St. Augustine's quest, uh, confessions, a hero quest. Like, but it's not a hero quest. It's, it isn't really. So limiting it to the hero quest, I think, diminishes it is kind of the thing. What's helpful also here is um, something out of uh, apologetics and understanding how worldviews work. So worldview is a term that gets a lot of use and and really is watered down a bit to mean good and bad things at this point. But, you know, the way it was used initially in apologetics is just to recognize that every single human being is always asking, who am I? Mm -hmm. What's my problem? And how do I fix it? And that that is your worldview. You're, you're, you have big answers. You got little answers, right. right? You know, you're doing this all the time with every step of your day, and you have the the meta, the big one that's carrying you. Mm-hmm. you know? um, and so, who am I? Father's son, right? Or who men say I am? Those two things, right? What's my problem? And my father's identity, <laughs> right? And what what men say of him? Actually, that's my problem too. Sin, right? Uh, and and then how do I fix it? Well, my father's identity. Uh, he sent his son, right? And then what is the confession of men, right? The word of God that is among us. So so this is really cool. It's like core stuff. I mean, I even call this scientific because it's uh, the categories are, are substantial 
and kind of capture everything. That's really neat.